You can come over to my house smelly, you're not showered, like your hair's not done, you don't have to have any of your life together, like, and you still have something to say. Like your voice is important and it matters. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. Today is a day that I've been waiting for for a very long time. I full on fangirled to the point of I glitched at the beginning of this interview and <laughs> so did I had the most awkward introduction, <laughs> which is only suiting because we interviewed Elise Myers and her husband, Jonas Myers. That's right. Elise has recently achieved internet fame and her videos are some of Sean's favorite and my favorite. She yes. is hilarious. She tells these personal stories in the most captivating way you can imagine. The thing that is so relatable about her is she talks so openly about mental health, anxiety, social like um, awkwardness, just all of these things that we truly go through on a daily basis that people don't display because they show perfection. And she kind of debunks that, which I love. I was surprised because if you watch her videos, she seems so well-spoken, so comfortable, mm -hmm. like an extrovert, but I enjoyed getting to know the more reserved side of her. Mm -hmm. And you could really see that in how she interacted with us and her husband. Uh, her husband, Jonas, by the way, also has an amazing sense of humor. Uh, he has built a reputation for creating hilarious comments on his wife's videos. And together they share a son uh, who is similar to one of our kids' age. Yes, August. That's right. And we really like this couple. If you want to find out more about Elise and Jonas, we'll link their information down below. But without further ado, we bring you the Myers. You did. Hello, guys. How are you? Good. How good. are you doing? Yeah, good. Good, good. to meet you. Uh, I told you guys this earlier. We are fangirling because we absolutely stalk your socials and think you are the funniest person alive. Um, and Jonas, I feel like we're finally getting to know you through social media now because you were like the secret man and you've like emerged, which is really the exciting. secret man. I've always just hid in the comments. So I was always be in the comments on Elisa's videos and then people are like, who is this? And I'm like, well... Yeah, I see everything behind the scenes, yeah. which is cool. He, w he was famous for his comments, and people would always go to the videos and be like, I just want to see what Jonas said. And it's it's so cute. I love that. They get to like learn who he is just through what he says. Yeah. Wow. How long have you guys been together? Six years? We've been together for six years, married for four years. Yeah. yeah. Dang. What about you guys? Dang. And we've been together 10 years. Yeah. Cool. Married six years. Wow. So. Awesome. Doing yeah. the thing. We're doing it. Somehow still together, you know? <laughs> Ten years later, we're doing it. Hey, that's that's incredible. That's awesome. Uh, how did you guys first meet? So we met in college. Uh, we were both going to college, and we met actually in a grocery store. So we were both uh, shopping for some groceries one night, and I was in my house clothes. And, uh, like, I was with my friend. We were making some dinner, so we were just grabbing some ingredients. And I ran into Elise. Her friend was friends with my friend. And so they started talking and I started talking to Elise. And I was just like, man, this girl just like, she's like asking me all these questions and making this great eye contact. And I just felt so comfortable with her. And I was just standing there in my house clothes. Like, you know, the house clothes that you put on like a, a when you get home. Yeah, basically pajamas, <laughs> but like throughout the day, like yeah. to make yourself feel sane. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So we were hanging out in the grocery store and. Yeah, I was buying a pound of roast beef and a pound of cashews that I was going to smash all in one sitting. And um, and we were talking and then we walked away from our conversation and his friend, his friend told him when he walked away, um, why don't you just like marry her already? Yeah. And then he stalked me on Facebook and found out I was dating somebody. Um, and then that was that for a little bit. And then I broke up with my boyfriend because I was like, that's okay. And then I got it. <laughs> wow. What was the first date like? I'm curious. So it was kind of interesting. We dated long distance at first. Um, and so our first in-person date was she came and visited me before we were like officially boyfriend and girlfriend. And uh, I took her to get tacos in Lawrence, Kansas. So I'm from a little town outside of Kansas City. And uh, we went and got tacos. We ate at a park. That's what I consider our first date anyway. Yeah. And um, so we, we went and got tacos. We walked to a park and had kind of a picnic. 
And uh, yeah, it was a pretty special day, which is cool. So what he's not saying is the whole first like week of us being in the same place was a whole date because we had never sure. spent like any time together in person. Before we were dating, I said, hey, I think we need some space because we were talking a lot and we weren't like dating. And I was like, I don't think that we should be talking this much if we're like not going to date. I was in Texas. He was in Kansas about to move to Nebraska. Right. And so I was like, let's just stop talking. I need space. And he goes, okay, great. Here's a plane ticket to Omaha. And I was like, Kansas. oh, sorry, to Kansas. Yeah. And, and, the, and I was like, that's not space. And <laughs> so then I went to Kansas. And so then right before I left, I was like, we're not boyfriend, girlfriend. Like, don't kiss me. Don't hold my hand. Like, I am not sure. And, you know, and so he's like, okay, great. So now he's like afraid of me. And then I get there and we spend like nonstop, oh, like, five days or something yeah the whole time yeah like sleeping in the basement he's up it's like there it was the longest most wild first day it was so it's just so funny to me. you also met my whole family i was staying in his family's house <laughs> like his mom brother like dad yeah. e everyone it was it's a little bit unique but yeah we're still together was it one of those like trips where it's kind of like your first date but after the first date was over you're like we're gonna get married yeah, yeah. <laughs> 100 percent. i was like i this is my person so now we're just gonna make it work but we didn't we thought we were gonna be long distance a lot longer so like i thought i was gonna go back to texas he was gonna go to omaha and we would be long distance the whole time i was doing my degree and then i ended up um quitting and moving to nebraska <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah wow so you have a lot of first dates that involve tacos at least <laughs> i was gonna say <laughs> Several. I didn't even think about right? the fact that our first date Oh my god. <laughs> I was going to ask. I was like, is this like an exclusive like <laughs> secret here that you're actually taco the guy? Time. No. no. <laughs> yeah. I, I literally never made that that connection till right now. I honestly until you guys asked that I kind of forgot that we got tacos cuz that whole week was kind of our first date, but Yeah. Yeah, so just two. Oh, huh. Just the two that really matter. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, matter. the worst <laughs> and the best. Yeah. What about you guys? Uh, what was your first date? Oh, Lord. Uh, kind of similar. So we got set up on a blind date. That la It was very short. It was, it was like one dinner, but like double date kind of. There was like buffer friends with us. because I we didn't had want it met. to be that short, but Sean, <laughs> Sean made it very short. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. So. Um, it was sweet. It was fun. We had fun. But I was like, I don't know how this is going to work. I lived in L.A. at the time. He lived in Nashville. And then didn't really talk for like nine months after that. And he kept pursuing me and convinced me to come to Nashville to like he said he was like, here's a plane ticket. Um, wow, went out so to Nashville. Really story. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Got to shoot your shot, yeah. right, Jonas? You just got to go for it. <laughs> went to Nashville, stayed for like four days. It was supposed to be like one day, ended it to be four. And after the four, I was like, this is my guy. This That's is my cool. dude. Yeah. That's so cool. I love it. It's yeah. kind of like when you know, you know. Yeah. Especially when you get to a certain age, it's like if you're in a life stage where marriage just is possible, then it's like if you know, then it's like, okay, we'll just, we'll just go for it, I guess. And it worked. <laughs> yeah. you know? We did it. Yeah. Uh. Great. <laughs> uh, Jonas, so you mentioned some things that you were attracted to with Elise. Elise, what was it about Jonas that you were like, this is the dude? I'm going to be honest. It was his house clothes. <laughs> so <laughs> it was, that was my biggest fear is like um, wearing pajamas at the grocery store because my mom always this. I don't know where this came from. My mom's like, don't wear your pajamas when you're driving, because if you get in an accident, then the policeman's going to find you in your pajamas. I don't know what, where that came from. <laughs> what? So I, I that's so <laughs> random. It's like a grandma thing to say. Yeah. And so, and so when I got to college, I was like, I'm wearing my pajamas everywhere. <laughs> and then he was wearing his house clothes. It sounds so dumb, but that was like, I was like, you feel comfortable enough to wear your house clothes at the grocery store. I didn't have a lot of friends that felt that comfortable with themselves. And I was like, this is my person. Also, I do. I love that you say house clothes. I know. I have I, never heard I, that. I've never. It's like, it's like the clothes you change into when you get home, but they're not like your PJs. They're like your sweats and your active wear and you're like. Right. You like could go out in them. You're, they're not like your flannel elf onesies, you know. So and they're not like your like <laughs> nice, like comfy clothes that you would like your the type of show like clothes. athleisure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Today's episode is brought to you by ba -ba -da -da, Athletic Greens. You know what I love, babe? 
Uh, what's that? Mornings with you, darling. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I feel like we only get 15 minutes together before the kids wake up. And honestly, those are some of my favorite minutes of the day. I wake up, I feed Nash, I make us coffees, and then we take our AG1. <laughs> it's honestly the best way to start the day, and it's made such a difference in our energy recovery and focus throughout the day not only does ag1 get me going in the mornings but it supports mental clarity and alertness and it contains less than one gram of sugar plus in just one scoop of ag1 there are 75 high quality vitamins minerals whole food source superfoods probiotics and adaptogens it's the one thing i recommend to everyone when they ask what to implement in their routine for a healthier lifestyle. My parents are even hooked. Honestly, we can't say enough about AG1. It really is the best. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash eastfam. Again, that's athleticgreens.com forward slash eastfam to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. We'll also link it down below and let's get back to it. As things have progressed, the last couple of years have been wild for you. Do you think you're going to stay in Omaha or, or what does that look like? We, you want to see it? So we actually just got back from California um, a couple of days ago and we were, my, my whole family's in California. My family didn't get to see me pregnant or with August. So it's been like a long time since I got to see my family. Um, and so we were going to like do a family tour of everybody getting to meet August, but then we were also trying to scope it out as to whether we wanted to like move to California, where we would want to move. So we got Airbnbs pretty much all over Southern California, um, just to test it out. And I was fully convinced because of the nature of my job, I, I just have so many people telling me like, eventually you'll need to move to LA. You know what I mean? Like it's like in the entertainment industry, I guess like it's a very common thing for that to be the next right thing for people. So in my head, I was like, all right, well, we're moving to LA eventually. So this is a no brainer. Jonas was not like as excited and like there yet mentally. And then when we got there, I was like, this is not it. <laughs> like it was not, it just didn't feel like home. I don't know. I, I am from California, but um, I've just grown to really love the Midwest. I feel like this is kind of our culture and our people and it feels really safe. And so I don't know if we'll be in Omaha forever. I don't see us moving to like Hollywood at, you know, anytime soon, unless there was an opportunity where it was like, you have to be here. But there's like a lot of places on our heart that we feel um, would be cool. Like Chicago is one of them. We love Chicago. We love Texas, we love um, Omaha, you know, I don't know. It's like we, we can stay or, or I don't know. It just feels like until the opportunity makes sense, uh, we're just gonna stay in Omaha until we can't because we love it. Yeah. We're both Midwesterners. I'm from Iowa and he's from Indiana. So I get right. it. The Midwest is different. Yeah, it's definitely right. different. Especially with the kid. It's like California doesn't, it's, it's yeah. just a different game out there with oh, the kid. Oh, and it's you know? expensive. It's so expensive <laughs> and hot. Oh my gosh. Guys, so one thing about Elise is that she hates hot temperatures. Like it does not matter anything, honestly, anything above 70 degrees is like, this is dog's breath. And okay. she, I'm out. She, I want out. Like, we were, we were talking about this the other day because we just gotten back, you know, and in, in Omaha, it's about 55, kind of rainy this week. And, uh, and while we were in California, if there was ever a lull in the conversation, but even just between her and I, like we'd you know, be driving, like getting to, to wherever. And she'd just say like, man, it's so hot here. Like <laughs> I every time. And about after the fifth time, I was like, wow, like you really don't like this. Movie, right? And then I, I kept getting angrier and angrier. It was bad. Even thinking about it now, I'm like so angry. Yeah, like, she's like just clenching like, her fist. So she's like, I can't believe it gets that hot. It was April and it was like 110 degrees. It was 100 degrees, yes. It felt like 210 <laughs> degrees. Jeez. It was so hot. So I don't know if you listen to Freakonomics or not, Elise, but they did this whole episode about why Florida has the highest crime rate. And part of the reason <laughs> was because it's so hot. And it, I'm not sense. kidding. <laughs> it's like it makes people angry. <laughs> it, it's so uncomfortable. I think that the heat would. I don't know if the heat would absolutely make you a criminal, but I feel like it would. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the thought at least crossed our minds. 
Yeah. So much I will say. Yeah, I love you so much. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I will say Andrew's the same. If he ever like gets overheated with like his clothes or whatever, he panics. Oh yeah. And he's like, I have to get like, out of here. Clothes. And he starts like stripping clothes and like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like I'm trapped yeah. and I'm never gonna get out of these clothes. Yeah. They're gonna seal onto my body <laughs> like like I'm a vacuum sealed <laughs> piece of meat, and I'm never gonna escape from this sweater. Yes. My hell could be described as like putting me in a full on suit and then just putting me in the middle of a hot street. Like that would be <laughs> the worst street. thing. Just I'm sweating in a nice <laughs> yeah. piece of clothing. Dude. It's humid. We, it sounds like the worst thing we ever. We went to a wedding. When was this? This was when I was, I wasn't pregnant <laughs> anymore, right? No, no. Just recently. I think it was after, I think, I think we had had August. I don't think you were pregnant anymore. So I, I, we were sitting on the grass and it was... I could hear my hair growing, uh, like out. <laughs> my hair's curly. It was so hot and so humid. Yeah, I was sweating was so hot. bad that like I was dripping down on the chair, and I could I could like hear my hair just slowly <laughs> like going up. And there was like no water, and and then they did the thing where like the they like released the people so slowly after because the bride and groom wanted to like say hi to everybody. Yeah, it was no. not a good situation. I could like feel the the sweat rolling down my back, but just soaking. And wet. there was just no breeze, you know. Like when it's a hot day, there's no. This is like the <laughs> sorry, whole podcast. Sorry, we're like sharing way too much information just, about like, how sweaty we got. Complaining about how well, hot we get. Well, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew and I have like this saying because we're both good. sweaters, which is gross. I probably shouldn't share that. Um, Heavy sweaters. But we always say like going over the edge. Like there's this like there's this fine line where you can be hot and kind of like perspiring. But then all of a sudden you go too far and you are just dripping. There's no return. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no return. No, you, like your hair's you're, greased your back. Damaged. Your your face, <laughs> yes. your personality is gone. Yeah. You are horrible. Yes. <laughs> it's horrible. It's like after you, get you go from like <laughs> tapping your face to just like smearing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just the like worst. Just ripping the whole skin off. Just get my <laughs> flesh suit off of me. Yes. I like. I want to go bury myself into a thing of soil now. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Anyways, that's how I feel um, about heat. Yes. So, Elise, um, every single person in the world knows who you are now. Pretty much. Uh, I don't feel like that's actually an exaggeration. Knows who you are. Oh, perfect. Every <laughs> <laughs> yes. And they know you sweat now. Um, Good. How, ha how has that, like, been for you guys? You have literally become one of the most famous TikTokers, but also just, like, comedians and personalities out there how has it like affected you and your relationship and your family how has it been digested for you guys it um it has been what were you doing to your lip i, I just ripped a piece of skin off and are I you okay <laughs> are you bleeding Oh, it's all good. I'm like a nervous picker. Do you guys do that? <laughs> yes. <Okay>. I don't <laughs> hold, hold, please. I need to get a piece of tissue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is she actually bleeding? bleeding? Oh, my gosh. That's not funny. That Jeez. sounds painful. Jeez. All right, Jonas, while she's gone, I'm curious. How did you propose to Elise? Yeah, so I... So it was, so it was the weekend she moved up to Omaha from Dallas, and I was like... Gonna, I was like, okay, I'm gonna bring her to a sunrise and like we're gonna take her to this lake, watch the sunrise with her. There's like this fountain there. And then afterwards, we know these people that own a coffee shop right like right close downtown <laughs> in Omaha. And I'll go down there and I had the owner write, um, will you marry me on the cup? And then on one end, uh, on another cup say uh, yes, yes or no. no. Yeah. And I was gonna propose and then go and like have them give her the cups and the coffee and stuff and had a friend with photographer and stuff there. I wanted to do it just us because I didn't know if Elise would be like passing out, passing out or like crying and like, oh, I don't want photos like that. So early morning, it, it was, it was, uh, it was Labor Day. Yeah. It was Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. Or Memorial Day. Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it was in May and we, uh, so we got up super early. I drove her and I was super nervous. And when I get nervous, uh, Elise calls it my Robocop mode where I'm like kind of edgy and a little bit like just like irritated. It, it can seem like <laughs> a focus. Very focused. focused. Yeah. So 
I'm like driving and she's like, hey, like, how's it going? Like, day two of living in Omaha, just moved Radio up to silence. be with me. And, and she's <laughs> like, everything okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we just have to, we have to get there so that we can see the sunrise and all this stuff. We have to get to this fountain. <laughs> and I'm like, and, I'm, and, yeah. and you're like, we have to see the sunrise from this fountain. And I'm like, we can see the sunrise from the car, like right here. Like, We're looking no, no, at the we sunrise. Have to get there. And she's like, have you ever been there? And I'm like, no. no. So <laughs> I'm flying blind. And I'm like, in the middle of it, you, you know when you're trying to do something cool and in the middle of it, you're like, this could go very poorly. But I'm already in. It's like that point of no return. Yeah. So we park downtown, we walk like a probably 10 blocks to get there. We get lost. We can't find it. Yeah. And I'm like, do you know where you're going? And he's like, no. no. And I was like, hey, we stand right here and watch the sunrise. And he's like, no. And I was like, okay, well, it's rising. It is risen. So it's I'm, already there. I'm not sure what, we're, what else we do here. It's just right there. So we get to the lake. The fountain is off. Yeah. And so, so no fountain. So I'm like, this must be it. Like, I don't know where else. Are you serious? Lake. Yeah, and it's not the type of fountain where there's like a structure that water comes out of. It's just a lake that has little holes that water shoots out of. So without uh, without the water, there's just nothing. More of a pond, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a pond to look at, which is beautiful. Yeah, it was nice. And so we get there, I'm like, okay. So I'm like, Elise, I love you. Like, I love you. And she's looking at the sunrise. Like, she's not. The dude me. just raced through downtown Omaha for yeah. us to see the sunrise at this fountain. Yeah. And I'm trying to look at it. And he's like, then distracting me. And I'm like, I'm trying to like honor him by like, I'm like, he really, really wanted to see this. And then he's like, Elise, I love you. And I was like, I get it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I got down on a knee and I was like, I, will you marry me? And she like put her hands on her knees and she was like, I think I'm going to throw up. <laughs> oh, no. That's the first thing. Great. That was the first thing she said. Yeah. And then, then he said, is that a yes? And I said, yes. And then he said, I think I kneeled in goose poop. Yeah. <laughs> no. I ruined those pants. Yeah. Yeah. And then that was it. <laughs> wow. Oh my Here God. Here we are. Yeah, there we are. And it was, it was good. Like it felt kind of surreal, but it was a, it was a good time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, there's, there's a lot of things that went wrong, but the most important thing you got it dialed. Yeah. So, yes. Did it. We got yeah. engaged. Andrew decided to propose the night before he proposed. Really? Like it wasn't even like a plan. It was like a, I think I'll do it tomorrow. Why not? <laughs> You, yeah. you yeah. said I'm gonna propose to you tomorrow. No, yeah, you. I oh. didn't. Yeah, I had I zero plans until oh. the night before, oh. and okay. then it was like I thought oh, you were saying this. that he proposed. I, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna propose. Hey, you I'm proposing that yeah. I'm proposing tomorrow. Which I had this thought: Has there ever been a proposal that's not a surprise? Is it the one thing that is always a surprise? You know what I'm saying? I know that for most people, it's not a surprise. I mean, at that at that point, like, I I was surprised because he made it such a like I thought he was going to do it the moment I landed, and then I was so depressed that he didn't that I had a full mental breakdown the day before, basically saying like I moved here and this dude doesn't even like me, and then he told me to like, not wear the one outfit that I wanted to wear, okay. and so I was like, he doesn't like my style. <laughs> so that's not where my brain was at, but but I thought I was going to land and he was going to propose. So usually it's like not a surprise. If you're talking about it, you've been gone ring shopping. Which we had. Yeah. 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 But, okay. I would say I knew it was coming. I didn't know it was coming that day. But yeah, same. Like you have an idea. Yeah. I mean, no, if you're like, you itself. want to marry me? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You there. I feel like <laughs> yeah. know if, if it's happening or not. Okay. So going back to... The thing that made you bite a hole in your lip. Perfect. Um, yes. yes. The anxiety side of basically your fandom. You guys have created an empire and you're so mm -hmm. well known. And I know that comes with a lot of pros and cons. So just curious how you guys are dealing with that. Yeah. Do you want me to go? Do you want to go or do you want me to go? How about you start and I'll go. Okay. Um, I think it is the most shocking thing to ever happen to us, obviously. And to me, and I'm like, I don't know what's going on pretty much any any point of the day. Um, I like 
have just like really bad anxiety and um, really weird social anxiety. And so the fact that like I can't go anywhere without somebody knowing who I like knowing who I am is like the like terrifying. So it's like like today. Can I tell you a story that happened literally today? So. We're going to um, a show this week uh, here in Omaha, like a big theater musical. musical show. And I've learned when I go to these like theaters, when there's a lobby and stuff, um, that's prime time for people when someone takes a photo, like the whole lobby, like if everyone's waiting in this one space, it's over. Like yeah. I will now be like a statue taking photos all night. And I love it, but also it's like, if I'm with people, it can get really overwhelming. So I tried to call ahead of time because I've learned it's, it kind of is a nightmare. So I, I called and I'm like, I don't know how to say this. <laughs> I was like, I'm famous. <laughs> and, and I was like, and that sounds horrible and oh so gosh. dumb. And I need some help because I need you to be able to like put us in a place that I'm not going to be dis a distraction or like, um, and th this whole thing sounds so dumb that I'm having to even explain this. I, I'm so embarrassed. The security guard doesn't ask who I am. He just goes, you'll be fine. Do you need anything else? And I was like, <laughs> nope. Thank you. And I like, hung up <laughs> and I cried. Oh, no. <laughs> so, oh, no. so it's like learning um, just how to present myself and also how to like not take myself seriously and Anyways, it's all so much. It's amazing. <laughs> that was the first time I heard that story too. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, it's been such a wild ride. So all this happened literally like, la like not even a year ago. So it's been like eight or nine months since all of Elisa's social media has taken off. And it's cool. Like, I think, I think there's a lot of things that are in involved in like the, f the fandom and stuff, but um, Elise is so introverted and so anxious internally, but none of that comes across like externally, uh, when you're with her. And so like, it makes sense. It makes all the sense in the world that like people have labeled her like TikTok's best friend, because that like, as long as I've known you, everyone just is like a magnet to you and like feels safe and feels known and feels understood. And like, and I think because you deal with those anxieties and introvertedness, introversion, introversion, I think is the real thing. Yeah. Um, like people that feel those things are drawn to you, even though because you're like outwardly very welcoming and inwardly very anxious. Yeah. <laughs> and so it, it doesn't, I know this sounds weird, but like, it doesn't surprise me. Like all of that has happened. It doesn't surprise me because I've like, I fell in love with Elise. She's my best friend. So it makes sense to me why everyone loves her. And so, uh, yeah. And so I think, um, what's cool is to see her thrive in a place where, um, creativity and, um, yeah, this expression of storytelling and music and all these different things like writing and all these different facets that make up her TikTok um, are just so accessible. Like, it's just crazy that we live in a time that someone so gifted can actually express everything that she's really like capable of doing. And now it's like, okay, that's always been there, but now people are seeing it. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's been really cool for me to see her thrive and the, the famousness doesn't almost seem real, I guess, because like she's doing it from home. And so it's like, it doesn't seem yeah. real till we go do something where we're out in, in a big crowd. And then it's like, oh, wow. Like we see, we see it and it, yeah. and it's like happening at us and to us and around us. And we're so overwhelmed, but like, we're so grateful. Like I, I just struggle because I want to give everything of myself to everyone and I can't. And so I get just kind of like flustered, sure, you know, yeah. but it's been really cool. We're, we're really just riding the wave and trying to enjoy it and learn through it. And it's like, it's kind of trial by fire. Like it's yeah. every, every new situation that we're put in and opportunity that comes our way. Um, 
we don't know what we're doing. Like we've never been guests on podcasts until this season of our life. Like we've yeah. never written books. We've never written scripts. We've never told stories like this. We've never had to do interviews. And it's like, it's every single new thing. It's like, well, here we go. And <laughs> strap in. It's, it's, and yeah. if it goes badly, it'll be a good story. And that's great. So, yeah. I'm curious, going down a rabbit hole here, your success is one, because you're so funny and you're s such an amazing storyteller. But two, because you're so like, like you were saying, you're so relatable. You're literally like everyone's best friend because I feel like for so long, social media just serves up all of these like, I hate to say like perfect people. That's just so unrelatable. Yeah. You have all these like teenagers doing these dances where it's like, well, I don't know what you're doing. <clears throat> or you have like actresses or you have like what, what the society would say is like perfect people. And it's so refreshing to see someone real come to light and show anxiety and like um, social awkwardness and like anxiety, which is something I am very aware of and to see all of this. But I'm curious with all of that, reading through comments and reading through skeptics and haters, it's almost like society wants to um, force you out of that and question it and wonder if it's real or fake or whatever. Yeah. Um, how do you how do you handle the hater side of the success that you've drawn from being a vulnerable person? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I say all the time to Jonas, like, I'm so grateful that this season of our lives and all of this happened um, when it did, because if this would have happened to me when I was 18 or 16 or 20, whatever, like, I would have been so like broken by um, the like just sadness that people want to make you feel from their life, you know. And so I'm really grateful that that this all happened now when I have like a son, when I'm married, when I've established who I am, when I've spent years like in therapy and like healing parts of myself that would not have been healthy enough to share with the world until now, and like. Um, there is a bit of me that is like always going to need to, to check myself and my mental health and, and be very aware of, of what I'm like consuming, you know, of, of, of people's opinions of me. And like, it's a fine line between being responsive in my comments and being responsive to the community I've built and, and who I'm saying I'm like keeping available to, and then not reading so deep down that I'm like getting to people that don't love me and support me and want the best for me. And like... The cool thing about social media now is that the comments that are like kind just naturally kind of filter to the top. And so um, if I don't go um, shopping for pain down in the bottom of the comments, like I usually won't find it. I also, it's interesting, I've grown this like community of people that are all kind of like really um, socially anxious and like a little bit like older, I think. and just want a sense of like family and belonging and, and home within their own brains and selves. And so the nature of this like community I've built doesn't really lend itself to a lot of hate. And if they do, if it, if that does happen, it's so like it's weeded out of the comments so fast. Like yeah. people will like people find it before I do. I, I very rarely ever see people that are unkind but I'm also not sitting on my phone Googling myself. So it's like, you have to find a good balance. Yeah. Can I ask, Jonas, I feel like put it well, but the, the very quality that <clears throat> makes you popular online is the very quality that kind of should be the reason that you shouldn't be yeah. on, like, you know, like, so why, <laughs> why are you creating videos and why do you continue to? It's a good question. So, um, I, have always been like a creative person. TikTok was like a creative outlet that I started, did not think anybody was gonna see it. And um, when people started f seeing themselves in my content, like it just became so much bigger than me. It, it was like, I started to see that I could genuinely like add so much value to people's life and I could open up my life in the, the parts of myself that I have worked on and, and grown and healed and like, bring people along in it. Like I, it feels almost selfish, like to, 
to not share something I know I'm good at, that I know brings people joy, that I know um, encourages people and gives people tools to like fight the things in their life that I spent so many years wishing I had somebody to come alongside me and help me like walk through. And um, I just, I think that I'm so tired of seeing this like curated online presence. I'm tired of seeing people feel like the only way they can show up in the world, not even online, but just in their lives is like hair done, makeup done, like showered, um, like, do you know, like, you know, like, like bare minimum, like you don't even need to do that. Like you can come over to my house, smelly, not showered. Like your hair's not done. You don't have to have any of your life together. Like, and you still have something to say, like your voice is important and it matters and you matter. And it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside or what you feel like you've accomplished in your life or not. Like, I just, I really want people to understand that the way that I look and the way that I present myself is like not the thing that makes my my voice valuable and, and me valuable. And the more I can just like be myself, um, which isn't always going to be crazy hair, right? Like I did my hair for this because I was like, oh my God, I'm meeting celebrities. Like this is crazy. Like, uh, like it's not always going to be me waking up and like looking like a mess, but it will be me. Like I'm, I'm never going to present something that isn't me and that's really really important to me and um the more i can do that like my anxiety doesn't matter it's that's white noise like i, I just see the purpose in it and um yeah i feel like i could talk to you for hours because i feel like you were one of the first creators that you see on like the internet that like me and the girls behind the computer felt seen by and like we pass around your content every day. I remember you posted the um, take a breath with me oh, or whatever. No. Oh my gosh. We almost like started crying because it was, it's just like your content one gets people's attention because it's funny and it, it's relatable. But two, you have such good, like soulful foundations and morals kind of written through the lines and the scripts of everything that you post where it's actually just like, it's good people and it's good content and it's, a good influence and it's so refreshing and really really cool to see not only as just like a human but as a parent and wife like it's really special so thank please you. keep doing what you're doing i will i absolutely <laughs> will thank you jonas do you consider yourself a comedian as well no I, <laughs> like it's funny somebody um when all of this started taking off Somebody asked me, they were like, oh, so are you going to try to get famous too? And like, <laughs> oh, gosh. like, and, and it wasn't like harmful or anything. They weren't like, oh, are you going to try to get famous too? Like angry. They were just like, oh, are you going to try to do something in this space too? Yeah. And, and I said, honestly, no. Like <laughs> a, yeah. a month before everything took off, literally a month before I like, we call it retired. And I, I started staying home with August and staying home full time. And I was like, man, this is like the dream. Like, I, you know, I started doing that and in an effort to uh, release at least to do what she was doing before, which was web development. And, um, and so I was like, no, I'm just pumped to watch her thrive and, and grow and, and help people in this space. I feel like, um, the, yeah, the comedian thing is funny. Like, you know, I started doing some dad jokes on my TikTok with, with August cause he laughs at them. I haven't done them in a while, but uh, it was fun to kind of, to be in that space and, and write comments on Elisa's videos in an effort to support her. And like, uh, I don't know, like our roles are very different in this, but I feel like we're just as much like doing it together as, as anything we've ever done in our lives. Like, you know, every night real life is like, is hard. There are things that are hard in, 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 in everyone's life. Right. But uh, for us, like we get to be there for each other and to support each other. And I get to support Elise in this like cra crazy, but cool adventure and, um, and get to be kind of like a grounding factor for her. And that's like, uh, yeah, it's just an honor for me to be able to do that. And so, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't consider myself a comedian, but I, I say like I married in, so, <laughs> um, with all of your, with everything you guys have created as far as like sharing your life on social media goes, 
Have you guys created boundaries or rules within your relationship as far as what you can talk about and what you can share and how it goes with August and what gets involved within your scripting? Yeah, I think that for, for at least for me, and it kind of factors into kind of all of our stories is like, if it's not exclusively like my story to share, you know, my experience, like if I'm not sharing information, that would be like sharing someone else's story to tell, like that's, and that goes into like August. So like if August can't consent to me sharing a story of his and he grows up to be like an adult and can look back on these stories and is embarrassed because I didn't ask, couldn't ask his permission for that. Like that's the hard line for me at least. Um, and then for us, like with the boundary of like, like our relationship, like we only really share like little bits and pieces of like our story with like our engagement, but we're still so fresh into this that we're kind of learning as we go. Like there's not a lot that we've set out specifically, but a lot of our boundaries have been with like our time. So, um, I am always home at always, I'm 99% of the time home at bath time. So I, I end my day at 4 PM, go home, we have dinner, we do bath time for August and he, we put him down. And if I need to be available for work after that, I can be, but, um, that boundary of, of protecting our family time, like in this industry, um, I mean, you can be available 25, eight, and that's still like not enough time. And like, for me to kind of set a boundary of, of my schedule has been, I think the biggest safekeeping of our, of the health of our family. Um, and the content kind of just happens. I don't know. I, it's kind of an unspoken, I feel really safe with, what I would share and what I wouldn't. And I feel like you maybe, yeah, do you want to take that? Yeah, I think it's interesting, right? Like Elise has become famous and, uh, by opening up her life. And so like, it feels like our life is kind of out there for everyone. But I think the best way that we've found to protect that is to like, in our daily life, like our normal things that aren't being shared, we're just like constantly working on our friendship and um and working on our connection our connection with august and so like if you know if for some reason you know a day goes on and, and elise feels like i'm upset it's like we check in with each other and it's like hey what's going on um and i feel like because we work so much on our relationship our friendship and our relationship with august it protects like it it, it almost kind of covers a lot of content and and i don't know if there's ever been a time when either of us have felt like we've like overshared, overshared or anything like we're, we're pretty conservative in, in general and what we share on, on the internet. Like usually it's about something funny or whatever, which is funny because I feel like I share so much and then I get people still that are like, you're married or like yeah. you have a son. <laughs> and I'm like over here thinking like, Oh my gosh, what if I'm oversharing? And people are like, genuinely, most people actually think I'm a lesbian. Yeah. I, I still about 90% of my following thinks I'm gay. And I'm like, I love that you think that I'm a safe space because I am, but I've, I also am a heterosexual woman who is like married with a kid, but like, thank you so much for, yeah. for your interest. I love it. But it's like, yeah, it's just really funny. Like I'm, it's, I'm always shocked at what people, um, still don't know about us. Like there's so many holes in our story. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. What do you think is your best quality as a comedian, Elise? so funny to hear people refer to me as a comedian. I like, that's never something I was like, oh, I'm going to be a comedian when I grow up. Um, I think. I'm interested to hear this answer. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think I, I think that I am really good at voicing things that everybody thinks but doesn't even know to like say it out loud because it's like, by the time I'm saying it, it's already something that maybe you've experienced a lot, but just wouldn't even think that anyone else experiences it. You know what I mean? Like those kinds of things. Um, I think that's my like niche of comedy is just like, I didn't know we could say that out loud, but not in like a fart joke kind of way, like a, um, why are you mentioning how much I'm looking into your eyes? Like the eye contact comment makes me now not know where to look in this conversation. Like those kinds of things. I am giggling because the first thing that came to mind was the coffee creamer. 
Um, yes. I think you looked in the, yeah. Oh my gosh. I lose, I lose my right hand on a daily basis. So I just, <clears throat> you vocalize things very well. Perfect. Yeah, well, um, I want to, I want to tell her what I think she's the best. best yeah, oh, okay. Please. Can I say please that? Please do. Because I think you do talk about everyday kind of normal things, but your expressiveness and the way you're able to like <laughs> fully package that moment yeah. and tell a story around it, I think is unmatched. It's so incredible. kudos to you. Thank you so um, much. I have one more question, a uh, big question, and then we want to play a quick game with you guys. Yeah, I love it. If you guys are down for it. So being new into this space and having such incredible success has probably unlocked so many more opportunities for your, your guys' life than you could have ever believed up until this moment. So the question would be, with everything that you've achieved now, what is your ultimate career like dream moving forward? Or do you have one? Yeah, I mean, I, I see, I mean, there's so many things that I, I could say, but I think like the overarching Arching, arching, arching. I don't know about that one. Our, oh, the, the, arching? The, the big <laughs> goal here. Um, I, I would really love to make like creativity and um, like health in the entertainment space just possible for people. And so if I can build a business large enough to just employ like a crap ton of people and just be like, can I, can you come work for me? And I'm like, I want to make it the most creative, like the healthiest like job you've ever had. Um, so however, I really need to do that. Like if we need to make like a studio, people can come and like work out if we need to, I, I see, okay. So, you know, like Chip and Joanna Gaines. So I see them mixed with like, you know, Rhett and Link from like mythical, good mythical morning them. So if you like combine those two things somehow, that's like where I see us like creative, but beautiful and like all these different arms. So like food, but then also like a creative studio people can come work at. And then also like a coffee shop, but like just like those little things that every we can just include as many people as we possibly can. That's like, I think my goal, which did not answer your question. <laughs> it did. I love that. Perfect. I love that. Um, I thought it was going to be like a Netflix documentary, but I like, I like yours way better. Yeah. Oh, that'll come. That's all right. It'll happen. That's like, we're, we got to think bigger than that. <laughs> love it. Love that. Okay. I love that answer. We have rapid fire Q and a, so you're both going to respond however you feel like it in the moment. Okay. At the same time, just shout it out. No, we'll go, we'll go Jonas, then Elise. Okay. okay? Perfect. All right. If you could meet one celebrity for breakfast, who would it be? Uh, Michael Jordan. Easy. <laughs> I don't know. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. go. I'm blanking on every celebrity I've ever. You can't say yourself. Yeah. <laughs> ever. Um, That'd be a hilarious breakfast. I don't know. Rap <laughs> you excel in the rapid fire domain here, Elise. Oh yeah, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy and Nancy. Amazing. Uh, <laughs> this the next one's really gonna trip you up. Oh, no. Would this be this? Would this be the same celebrity you would want to meet for dinner? That's a weird question. Yes. Okay. No, I think I'd rather meet. Uh, I don't know. I feel like dinner with Michael Jordan would be more intimidating than like a <laughs> dinner with Michael Jordan would be like, how many whiskeys can you shoot down and then smoke a cigar and then yeah, play some many... basketball? Yeah. And he'd be like toasted after a sip and yeah. then he'd be like, I can't play basketball. I'd also feel like he's, he'd be sitting there like, yo, we just met for freaking breakfast. Why are we yeah. doing dinner together? Yeah. <laughs> Give, me well, me want. Give me some space. Give me some space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's something fans may be surprised to know about you both? Answer for each other. Jonas, you answer for Elise. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I have Jonas' answer. He is an incredible barber. Like he can do a fade, he can cut. He has the full gear, the apron, the like leather bag. Like the dude could open up a full barber shop right now and he would kill it. Home taught, so not licensed. I it's, want that to be. No, but it he could. Like the only thing standing is like the hours you have to get, which is like, it's like how many hours? Uh, it's different every state. 
but, but yeah, it's like 1500 or something. Yeah, crazy. It's like, who's going to go do 1500 hours? So anyways, he's really good at it. Uh, I would say something that people might not know is that although Elise makes funny like cooking videos, she's actually an incredible cook and baker. I would say even better baker than cook. Cooking out of necessity, baking out of like fun, but like a lot of people I think see that as a joke, like I'm going to make yeah. cereal or whatever. De depression meals. Yeah, depression <laughs> meals, but it's like, no, actually she really knows what she's doing. I've learned a lot from her in the kitchen. Sick. <laughs> Love it. That was flippant. Um, I don't know why this I did one's that. For El yeah. <laughs> this one's for Elise. How long does it take to record each TikTok video? How long did it take me to record it? No, like each one. How long does it take? Um, so it takes me an, uh, a little over an hour per minute that you watch. So uh, to edit, not even to film it. Wow. So that's not writing or filming. So every minute of it takes me just on my thumbs with my phone, dragging stickers and setting durations, and then I mess it up, and then I have to do it. It's like it's hours and hours and hours. People don't realize. Mm. Wow. It's a lot. Yeah. Would love to see your screen time. Uh, you don't want to. it's it's like it'll tell me like and i'm just like i want to throw up please stop telling me that thank you turn uh, turn off i know yeah and uh, what sucks is like i would edit on the computer but um each platform is so interesting in that it will only favor content that you make in the app and so i can make it in final cut pro but it's not going to get seen and i want my content to get seen because i think it's important and so i'm like well i'll just sit for three hours on my floor um with my phone <laughs> Wow. Love it. What's the last thing you argue, argued about as a couple? Well, we had kind of not an argument, but kind of a stressful morning. I, I was moving the TV up. <laughs> and so, because like August is at the age where he can grab it now. And so I was moving it up and August was not happy this morning. And so all he wanted was dad. And dad was, was like, I'm going to move the TV up. Yeah. At least was not super happy with my timing this morning, but, <laughs> but it's okay. That's all right. We made it. I felt bad for him because I, I get to leave the madness. If he's screaming, I'm like, I'm going to go to work. I love you. And Jonas is like holding August, just screaming. So I'm like, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> You're the one that has to like pacify this situation. But I just felt, I felt bad that I was leaving him in a mess. Mm. But that was another fight. We don't, we don't really get like into arguments. I will just like go quiet. Like I, I don't fight. I just, I'm like, well, I'll never talk again. It's all good. Like I guess I feel so guilty and bad that I'm even upset that I'm like, that's it for me. Thank you. <laughs> What's the last thing you guys argued about? <clears throat> when was it? On the plane yesterday. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here we go. yeah. I like that. I you know. <laughs> I know. I know. Like, Let me pull out my journal. I wrote about it. <laughs> Yeah. So I was going on a trip with my cousin. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to go on a trip with my cousin uh -oh. who, who I love very much. And the plan was to go to Medellin <laughs> and I ran it by Sean and she was like, I don't like, I don't like that idea. Hold up. Hold up. You're going to be very aware of this because I'm sure you get this. You know, those sketchy emails that just show up <laughs> no, and they're no. like, I would like to hire you. <laughs> no, uh, please come to X, Y, and Z at this middle of the night location. So he got a really sketchy email to come to go to Medellin to speak How about coffee. Know where that I've is. Never even heard of that. Is that Colombia. Colombia. If you've ever seen Narcos about oh, Pablo no. Escobar, yeah. um, it's like cocaine capital. And I of the was world. like, no, I don't think so. <clears throat> so then he basically tells his cousin, anyways, he's like, we're going. I'll figure this out. <laughs> And I found out about it. And I was like, no, 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 <laughs> This ain't happening. So I'm not going to Medellin. Yeah. To say. yeah. So end of the story is. Yeah, no, we already knew that. Yeah, no, you're that's, not going. Yeah, that's not a surprise yeah. to anybody uh, here but you. So it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, this is bad. Um, okay. Next question. What's the best quality about your dog? Is it the best quality? Yeah. He he's actually so stressful. So <laughs> we we he's adopted made us more active. Yeah. I guess. yeah. He he we adopted him at like during the pandemic before we wanted to like have August and we were like testing the waters of like having a kid and then we decided to throw an actual kid in it and then 
we didn't realize uh, Bauer was losing his mind, so he's really like not with it, and then oh. howls all day and all night. Oh, oh so no! It's like he sleeps worse than our baby, and it's like yeah. if you wake August up, we will. Um, it's <laughs> you. We'll take you back. We rest. Yeah, we'll take you back to where you came from, sir. <laughs> um, we won't. Unfortunately, my heart Elise would could, never. Elise could never. I've stopped making that joke because Elise will like. I'll just start crying. Literally on the spot. turn away and, cr and cry and. Yeah. So. Yeah. So like, he's just cute. <laughs> he's cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, dude. For the first four years of knowing each other, the dog was the yeah. thing we argue. I love dogs. But Sean treats dogs, dogs are royalty. Like, dogs are higher than humans for so, me. Yeah, that's yeah. No, I get it. No, I get it. I get that it. That is so funny. All right, what's the worst life advice you've been given? <laughs> that's a good question. Worst life advice. Oh, I've been given so much bad life advice. Um, don't try so hard. Um. Um, what else? Like, um, oh, I should go to, I should get my degree even though I don't want to do it. <laughs> Horrible advice. We share that. I don't have a degree. Yeah, me either. Do, yeah. you, to, do you have a degree? He, yeah, he does. I do. You I have, have one. Yes. <laughs> I think Damn, I guess why, like, why do I feel freaking I bad about one. it now, Jonas? <laughs> no, Your girls are making me feel guilty. I, I, I have one. Jonas has a degree. It's okay. It's yeah. all right. It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. like that's going to be like a negative. Yeah. No, I, I think like I just I can't handle when people are like, you need to be in hundred $100,000 of debt to have a degree that you're not going to use. I learned it's kind of the honor system. I just told someone I had a degree at a job and they were like, okay. Who did you do that with? I, I'm not going to uh, say. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, and they were like, great, sounds good. And I was like, you're not going to check. And they're like, no. <laughs> like, do you want to bring your diploma in? I was like, I could print one offline. I don't know. Like, I, 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 I could go on an entire rant about that, but a degree doesn't mean you're qualified. No. So it's like. You're also picking a degree before your brain is like going to be developed for like eight more years. Jonas, yeah. how are you feeling right now with this conversation, man? <laughs> yeah. like, it was just right. four years and right. a couple hundred grand, right? Like, Yeah, mine was, well, yeah. This was different. Mine was different. We, we decided to do the online thing after coming back, and it was like he only had a few, like, online courses basically yeah. to finish it up. So oh, his gotcha. was like he didn't have to do the debt thing. Yeah, and I worked full-time as, as we did it. So it was, yeah. like, a little bit of a non-conventional, which I would, like, I mean, work really well for us. Yeah. but. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't say. I mean, I'm not using my degree now as a stay-at-home dad. <laughs> so, but it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm mixed on it. I don't want to. I don't want to like bash it because people are like. No. Need them. I I want a doctor that has a degree. Yeah. So. Yeah. Definitely, if you're listening to this and you're a doctor, please have a degree. Please. Thank you. <laughs> don't do please the don't lie on the resume yeah. with that one. Yeah, yeah. Do not like, yeah. <laughs> That's not going to be my advice. <laughs> yeah. What's the worst advice you've ever gotten from Elise? <laughs> just, just lie. If you don't have it, fake it. Lie. I don't know. That's funny. Oh. Great. What is your favorite quality, Jonas, about Elise? About Elise? Just in general anyone <laughs> favorite quality what, <laughs> of, <laughs> uh, I think um, I think my favorite quality about Elise is that she is so sweet like people will say like oh you're so sweet or that's so nice or like kind or whatever like that that term gets overused I think but Elise is genuinely like the most pure-hearted this sounds biased, but like, this is just the reality. Like she's the most kind hearted, sweetest person that I've ever met. And like, just n like knowing like the anxiety that she wrestles with and things that she's already talked about, like she has every reason not to be that way, but she has like fought and been like, that's why I call I, on a lot of her comments. I, I'll call her brave one. Like that's why she's brave to me is that she has chosen to stay sweet and to stay just this beautiful person uh, inside and out. So, nice. yeah, I love you. I love you too. 
All right, my, yeah, it's your turn. No, yeah, just... okay. <laughs> my favorite quality of Jonas um, is, so I was always told as a kid that like I either had to choose between a guy that was like really like, like manly, like tough guy or a guy that was really sensitive. Like I couldn't have both. And so I just had a million people be like, you have to pick, you can't have, you can't have both ways. And when I met Jonas, it was like, I can't believe anyone ever convinced me of that. Like he is this like strong, tall, like buff, like all the dude. I'm like, wow, oh my God, all the muscles. Wow. But then like, he like is so generous and like so kind and, and gen like genuinely like you, he would, drop everything and like go help somebody if they needed it and like he would open up his life and his home and his finance like everything and he's just like and you've gotten softer too as like we have have been married where now he's like okay i won't make the joke about bauer like it's it's just so cool like he he's both and i i really really respect that because i think that there is such strength and like vulnerability and and being somebody that isn't so like tough that they can't like hurt with people and, and love people and be there with people in the trenches. And like, um, I love that his masculinity doesn't get in the way of him loving people. Well, love it, man. I'm excited for you guys. Uh, I look at how things have unfolded for both of you over the past year. And I think it's like one, just very good for the internet and for people on the internet, but also your approach and how you interact with each other and how you view the industry and what you're doing. It's, uh, it's very rare. And I think it's like in part of the reason for your success, but also will lead to so much more success because it's like just more sustaining. It's more healthy and approachable. And so I'm, I'm pumped for, uh, for what's next for you guys honored that you took the time to join us today. Um, and I hope we can continue our friendship. We're coming to Des Moines, Iowa this weekend. So right up the road. <laughs> what? Are you serious? Yeah. We should hang out. Dude, we're yes, going to be there please. Thursday through Sunday. I'm not yeah. Happy. We're going to, we should connect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we would love that. Okay, okay great. Well, okay, great. Yes. Anyway, well, we'll, we'll take care of that after we end this episode, but for those <laughs> listening, would you like who, to give me who, your cell phone number? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, here's my address. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For those uh, listening who want to f yeah, yeah. find out more about Elise and Jonas, uh, we'll link their information down below. I would highly recommend checking them out. Elise tells stories like you wouldn't believe in a way that is just so amazing. And Jonas, you'll find creeping in the comments. So anyway, thank you for the time. <laughs> and uh, we'll, see, we'll see you next time. <laughs>